Do you like a game that you can bury yourself in? A game that walks the line of realism and immersion so well that you completely and utterly lose yourself in its universe? Do you like the thought of exploring space and knowing that no matter how much you explore, there will always be more out there? Would you like to have the choice to play your game alone? With friends or with strangers, kind of like an MMO? You do? Excellent. We're one and the same, you and I. Here are the 15 reasons why you should shut off the chains of this world to explore the boundless frontier of space in the upcoming simulator, Star Citizen. It's an understatement when I say that Star Citizen is a game a lot of gamers seem to give a damn about. When Star Citizen was looking for funding, it was turned down by the major publishers, but funding via their website and Kickstarter brought this game into reality. As a matter of fact, it's gamers like you that made Star Citizen the number one crowdfunded game project ever. With over $4.2 million raised on Kickstarter alone, that was 210% of the project's original goal. Today, a Star Citizen has been backed by more than 100,000 gamers, with over $7 million raised and counting. It's about time for another good space sim. Wouldn't you say that the most important thing about a game is the person who makes it? Chris Roberts is the guy who made all of these games. Each epic in their own right, Space Sims is what made Roberts a gaming legend. So what did this god amongst gamers do with his gift? He quit. Or rather, he took a break to make some movies, but now he's back and he's ready to make us another spectacular title. Make no mistake, I've read this guy's Wikipedia page, so I know for a fact this game is in good hands. This game is first and foremost about immersion, and rightly so, being a space simulator. Above all, Star Citizen aims to make you feel like a space pilot. When you're sitting in the cockpit of your starship, you are meant to feel a deep sense of realism. Whether you're pitching left or firing your turrets, your virtual hands will mimic your every move. How easy it is for me to put myself in the shoes of my character has always been important to me in video games. So watching gameplay footage like this, yeah, it makes me all wet. One of my buddies tell me that playing video games for its graphics is like watching porn for its storyline. It's true, good graphics aren't the most important thing about a game, but that doesn't mean I don't want them. Hear me when I say Star Citizen does not have good graphics. Star Citizen has amazing graphics. I'm sorry consoles, but you've been holding technology back for far too long. PCs sit on the throne of innovation. Don't mistake what I'm saying here for opinion. This is fact, plain and simple. Chris Roberts has that special place in my heart because he doesn't only recognize this, but he built his game around it. Star Citizen's level of detail has been described as 10 times the amount found in today's AAA titles. Pilots, fighters, and cruisers look good, and it has everything to do with the fact that they are rendered in 10 times the amount of polygons. It's like the difference between glasses and no glasses, standard definition and high def. All this on the Cry 3 engine, what you might recognize from these visual masterpieces. Physics aren't often cited as a reason to be excited for anything, so bear with me. I'll try to make it sound interesting. Sir Isaac Newton is the deadliest son of a bitch in space! Sir Isaac Newton himself would play this game. That's because in this game, mass, force, and energy all have real effects on how your ship hurls itself through space. Your ships are equipped with thrusters and engines, and all are linked to a computer that helps the pilot navigate through space. You can enjoy the realism as you see these thrusters rotate and engines roar as they produce yaw, pitch, and roll. These realistic flight physics will no doubt add an extra layer of authenticity. I very much like authenticity. Whenever a game comes along that offers a true range of scale, I applaud them. 
So many games nowadays take the easy way out and give you these awesome vistas and massive structures that really are only good to look at. You can't really go to those places or stand on those structures. It's cardboard, counterfeits. Star Citizen recognizes their game won't survive with such cheap tricks. I'm not just looking at a one kilometer long carrier. I get to get out and walk around on this thing. I can run the length of the hangar, I can stand on the bridge, and everything is proportioned to my 1.8 meter tall little dude. If that's not good enough, we're promised all this with not a single load screen in between. Behold, ladies and gentlemen, the power of PC. While Star Citizen does feature a single player campaign, it also boasts a cooperative mode where you can fly alongside friends and explore the galaxy together. I can even fly a battle cruiser and have a group of friends manning the turrets, shields, and engines, helping me live out my Star Trek fantasies. Make it so, number one! On top of all this, Star Citizen will host a server of their own that everyone can join. So whether you're the space explorer that would rather have at it alone, or the PvP junkie, such as myself, that would like nothing better than to test their resolve in massive space battles. There's something here for everyone. Nothing says no boundaries like a sandbox game. Well, except for maybe space. There are those of us who love exploration, and few titles manage to do it right. If Star Citizen simulates space, shouldn't it be boundless? Shouldn't it reward exploration in a meaningful way? Well, it aims to do just that. For example, some of you will find your fortune in the stars by stumbling across a large asteroid field full of precious metals. Map the location and sell it on the market. Those of you who have played EVE Online know exactly how this system works. Charting black holes and investigating anomalies in space, it's freaking fun. What's the point in having a sandbox if you can't affect meaningful change? It'd be like telling a kid in a literal sandbox that he can't build a sandcastle. Everyone wants to feel like what they do matters in a game. However, so many multiplayer games fail utterly at this. I'm sure many of you have played an MMO where the developers try and make you believe you've made an impact on the world, when really, you've only done the same thing a thousand people have done already and a thousand more will do after you're gone. It's this fake persona of importance that really just makes me sick. Don't insult my intelligence, give me meaningful ways to leave my mark on this virtual world or let me be on my way. Star Citizen has a rare opportunity since they are dealing with the vastness of space and they're looking to embrace it. As a traveler of the stars, if you discover a new system no one has journeyed to before, you become a permanent part of the Star Citizen universe. You will get to name that system after yourself. Talk about incentive for exploration. My only concern is the guy whose avatar name is something like Love's Anus. Will we go probing in the Love's Anus system? Chris, please have something in place to prevent this. Do you want to know what really pisses me off? pisses me off about subscription based MMOs they make you pay $15 a month with a promise of new content now you'd think the millions of dollars backing MMOs like WoW they'd be able to afford to hire a big enough team to release content not every couple of months but every freaking week this blatant price gouging pisses me off and it should piss you off let me make it clear now, Star Citizen does not have a subscription fee. Not only does it not have a subscription fee, but the developers will be adding content via micro updates not every few months, but every week or two. Just like real space, Star Citizen will see an ever expanding cosmos. Speaking of expansion, I've always been a fan of the modding community. Nothing extends the life of a video game quite like nurturing a healthy modding community. Just take a look at your game shell for examples, Fallout 3, Morrowind, Team Fortress 2. They all thrive and live well beyond their years because of the power of mods. Seriously guys, where would we be without Skyrim's nude mods? We'd all be forced to get those real girlfriends I've been hearing so much about. Chris Roberts has made it clear that he will be promoting the modding community with more than just tools. He talks about giving modders the opportunity to even host their own private servers to use as a kind of playground. 
In addition, if a mod has what it takes to be a part of the main server and the universe, like say someone designs a kick-ass ship, it will be implemented and available for purchase by the public. Not only that, but the modder will receive the rewards, giving them incentive. I can't wait to see the modding community grow around this game, and I look forward to supporting them. Yes, by God I do. The signature of a non-linear game is choice. The freedom to be who you want to be, and more importantly, kill who you want to kill. Star Citizen looks to put fate in your own hands by not forcing you into a one-size-fits-all mentality. This can be most readily seen in how they are approaching character customization. Remember that single-player campaign I previously mentioned? Apparently that is a military campaign that is completely optional. If the military life doesn't suit your playstyle, maybe the life of an explorer or businessman sounds more to your liking. Or maybe you're a scumbag like me whose sci-fi fantasy is leading a band of renegades against mining operations for easy credits. Decide on the man you want to be now because in Star Citizen, anything goes. If Borderlands is a game for gun porn, then Star Citizen is a game for shit porn. From what I've seen, ship customization in Star Citizen is elaborate, to say the least. A ton of attention has been given to the different loadouts that you can choose for your ship, making your spacefaring vessel truly unique. Will you be looking to make an honest living in the stars? Make a properly modified mining vessel with a large cargo hold and powerful engines. I, for one, look forward to plundering you in a fast ship that can pack a quick punch and get away with the booty. I like booty. So you've played space games before. You got your hole, you got your shields, if both hit zero it's all like... Came from behind. <sighs> you poor, poor fool. We thought I was going to be able to make it to the end without a Star Wars reference. In the past, space combat was made shallow with a generic hull and shield meters. Star Citizen preaches realism, and it reflects in the way your ship takes damage. Taking a hit from an enemy turret will have serious consequences. Should one of your thrusters take a direct hit, your maneuverability will be compromised. Imagine for a second the extra layer of authenticity this will bring to combat. Just like real nautical vessels, space battles will be fought and won by the strategic planners rather than the biggest guns. Positioning yourself correctly in a combat situation will help protect vital systems and will keep you in the fight longer, or in the case of the miner or hauler, help you get away quicker. This excites me because I enjoy the game that doesn't boil down to simple numbers and firepower. This excites me for the same reason I choose Battlefield games over Call of Duty. More often than not, the victor isn't chosen by the guy with the quickest reflexes or the biggest guns, but by the thinker, the planner, the military strategist. Thus, we arrive at reason number 15, in a category all its own. Sure, I could have put it under realism, but I thought it deserved its own category. Oculus Rift Integration. For those who aren't familiar, virtual reality. Imagine sitting there and turning your head about in a fully rendered cockpit. Star Citizen has backed and supported the Oculus Rift, the premier virtual reality platform that is said by many to be the future of the gaming industry. Although the Oculus Rift has yet to hit the consumer market, when it does I look forward to throwing my money at it to experience my lifelong dream of virtual reality gaming, and I'm glad to know I'll be putting it to good use in a proper space simulator like Star Citizen. Ladies, mostly gentlemen, are you horny for Star Citizen? I know I am. The more I look at this game, the more I realize it might well be the game that revives this beloved genre. A space simulator that you can experience on a realistic and engaging level. A game that you can lose yourself in. I hope I've been able to offer you some insight on this upcoming title. If you're hyped for this game like me, be sure and share it with your friends. I hear space gets lonely. If you liked this video format, be sure to like, and more importantly, subscribe for more. I've been Josh, this has been the Shoddy Cast, we'll catch you later.